What's up guys? So Halloween's coming up and I thought it'd be fun to make a tutorial on this looping skull animation that I made. The techniques are relatively simple, so just follow the steps and you'll get a render just like this one. Um, this tutorial was actually requested by one of my followers on Instagram, so if you are following me on there, I encourage you to leave a comment on any render that you like. I'm happy to make a tutorial on request. I'll leave my handle down below if you want to follow me, that's at Nemotion. Also, I've recently launched my Patreon page, so if you find value in the content that I'm putting out and would like to say thanks, the best way to support me is through there. Anyway, on with the tutorial. Right, so once you've got Blender open, the first thing I'm going to do is just delete that default cube. So hit X and hit delete. Now I'm too lazy to model my own skull, so I'm just going to go to this website that I use a lot. It's called Sketchfab and it is awesome for finding 3D assets for free. Uh, I'm not actually affiliated with this website in any way, I just really think it's a good website. So just type in sketchfab.com and we're going to search for a low poly skull. And as you can see, we have loads of options, but we're going to go with this one here. So thank you and Zep for this model, I'll be leaving credit in the description. Um, yeah, just come to download model, you want to download the original format in FBX. Just for the sake of the tutorial, make sure you download this particular asset. I'll be leaving a link to it in the description because you might run into some issues down the line when we try animating it. Right, so once you've downloaded that, just make sure you've saved it somewhere you can find it. We want to import the skull now into Blender. So if you go into File, hit Import, and you want to put Import FBX. If you downloaded a different asset, it might be in a different format. Um, but yeah, in this case, it's FBX. And just locate the FBX file and just click import FBX. Now it's a bit small, so we're just going to scale it up a bit. Now I'm going to click on my camera and I'm just going to hit Alt G and then Alt R. That resets the location and the rotation. Now I'm going to hit RX90 just to face the camera along the Y axis. Now I'm going to hit G, Y, minus 8 because I want to start the camera point along the Y axis. And now if I hit 0, I, can, I get a nice view of my skull here. Cool, so that's our skull there. And as you can see, this particular asset is separated different parts of the skull. So you've got head low, jaw low, tooth low, and tooth too low. Now I want to animate the mouth really quickly to give it a sort of um, a sort of chewing effect, if that makes sense. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring the timeline up. I'm going to join the tooth two. You see this one highlighted. And I'm going to join the jaw low together. Click on your tooth two, hold control, and then click on your jaw. So you select both objects and just hit control J. That's going to join the two objects together now. I'm going to make it a five second loop on the end frame, set that to 120. And let's just animate this combined object by rotating it on the X axis. So we get that sort of opening and shutting. So we have it set at 90 degrees by default. So we'll just add a keyframe there on the start. And we're going to hit shift D. And we're going to bring that to frame 1 to 1, just so that we make sure that our jaw ends in the same point that it starts. That's crucial if you want it to loop. Right, so let's go to frame 11. Let's move the rotation to about, we'll say about 130, I think. I think that's a good point. We'll just apply a keyframe there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to highlight these two. We're going to hit Shift D. And we're going to bring it up, the first one up to frame 21. And then we're going to hit Shift R and it's going to repeat the process. And now, when you hit play, you're going to get this perfect loop of the jaw opening and shutting. Right, and just to keep our scene tidy, I'm just going to combine this tooth low with this head low and I'm going to join the objects. So Control J. So now we just have two and I'm going to name this one Skull Head and call that Skull Jaw. Now I'm going to shade this skull, so I'm going to go into rendered mode. So hit Z and then 8, and that's going to allow you to start shading the object. Now the first thing I want to do is come to my world settings. I'm going to make the world black. So just bring that down. Next step, click on your skull head, come to the material settings. And I'm just going to delete this material, so just uh, remove this material slot. Click on this negative symbol. And we'll do the same with skull jaw. Just do that. Remove that. So now we have a plain mesh with no shading on it. Now I'm going to come to the top corner here. I'm just going to drag that in so we get a new window. And we're going to start shading this skull with the shader editor. So just click on this thing here. Come to shader editor. And let's drag that window in. We don't need this thing. Now we're going to add a new material slot. It will automatically add a principled BSDF shader. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this light because I don't want the um I don't want there to be any light shining on the skull. I want to use I want to light up the scene using emission on the object. So just click on the light, just hit X and delete. It's going to look like the skull's gone, but it's still there. There's just nothing lighting up the scene for you to see it. So click on your skull head again. We're going to hit Shift A in the node editor, and we're going to add a shader, and we're going to add an emission shader. We're just going to pop that there, but we want to mix these two together. And as you can see, you can only plug one node into this material output. So we need to add a mix shader. So hit Shift A, add a shader, add a mix shader. Just pop that there in between the material output and the principal BSTF. And now just plug in this emission shader into the second input on that mix shader. And now you can see when you play with this FAC, you can sort of mix between the principal BSDF and the emission. So the further to the right you pump the mix shader, it goes into full emission. I'm going to give this a nice emission strength of about 8. I think that looks good. And we'll just leave that center for now. Now the mix in between these two is a bit boring. It's not. There's not a lot we can do this right now. So we're going to use a layer weight node to control the factor of this mix shader. So first thing I want you to do is hit Shift A and we need to add a color ramp. This will just give us more control on the layer weight. So just plug the color into the mix shader, into this fac. Now this removes that factor slider there and it lets you do essentially the same thing with these, but it just gives you more control when you start adding nodes. We're going to add our layer weight now. So, so if you just hit F3, that allows you to search and we're going to search layer, add that, pop that here. Now we're going to plug this facing output into our color ramp. And now when you crunch these in, you get this really cool effect where it just sort of emits light from the edges based on where you are in your viewport. I think it's a really cool effect. So we're going to crunch this black one in and we're going to crunch this white one in. And now we can change the color of our emission shader. So I'm going to make it sort of orangey red, I think. And then I'm going to add another color ramp. So hit Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp, pop that in there. And that's going to replace the color. But I want to crunch in two different colors just to make it a bit more interesting. So I'm going to plug a noise texture into this color ramp. So hit Shift A again, Texture, Noise Texture. We'll plug the FAC into the FAC. And we're going to crunch these two dials into each other. But we're going to make them different colors. So I'm going to make that my sort of orangey red. I'm going to pump the roughness up. Just crunch these in. And I'm going to make this one probably a bit more yellow. Just give it a bit more definition. And you can play around with this blend on the layer weight. You can sort of use that and balance it with color ramp here. I think about there looks good. Great. Now, only thing left to do is to link these two materials together. Click on your skull head. Hold shift. Click on the skull jaw. You want to hit control L and you can select materials and that's going to link the materials now. And now you can see that material has been applied to the jaw as well. Great. Next step, we're just going to come out of the shader. We don't need this now. And we're going to come out of out of render mode. So hit Z and then 6. I'm just going to turn my overlays on. Right, so we're done with the shading. So now we're going to make some more interesting animations. So we've got a skull here. Click on the skull head and the skull jaw. And we're going to hit GX2. And that just pops out there. Now we're going to hit Shift D. We're going to hit X minus 4. So that we have two skulls equal distance apart. Now I'm going to hit Shift A. Add an empty and we're going to add a plane axis. I'm going to hit GX5. Now I'm going to hit Shift A. Plane axis. GX minus 5. So you have one empty for the right skull. One empty for the left skull. Now just to keep things organised I'm going to rename these. So these two I'm going to change to dot r skull head. So same with this skull jaw, dot r. And same with this empty, dot r. And let's just check that they're on the right side. So just scroll down. Yep, that's cool. Great. Now I'm going to animate this skull sort of going all the way around 360 degrees. So on the right skull, you want to click both of these. And then you just want to make sure you select your empty last. So make sure the empty is the last one you select as you're holding control and clicking all of them. And you want to hit Control P, Object, Keep Transform. And that parents this skull to this empty. And now you can rotate the empty and it, the skull will follow the path. Let's do a simple animation of this rotating 360 degrees along the Z axis. 
cool. But you'll notice it sort of slows down as it comes to an end. Now to get rid of that, you want to select A, T, and change your interpolation to linear. That way you get a constant animation. Great, now we're going to do the same thing with this skull. So again, select your skull jaw, hold control, skull head, then skull empty, and you want to hit control P, object, keep transform. And now I want to do this sort of on a different position. I want the rotation to be sort of offset. So I'm going to set this to 180, apply keyframe on the first at, on the first frame at 180, and on frame 121, we'll apply a keyframe on 180, frame 121 will do minus 180 and apply keyframe and there you go you should get this cool animation now I'm just gonna make a simple tunnel so I'm gonna hit shift A add a mesh and we're gonna add a cylinder now I'm gonna come into edit mode so hit tab come to face select here let's get rid of these faces so we can get a tunnel I'm gonna hit R X 90 so that you're facing the tunnel along the y-axis where our camera is pointing and I'm going to hit S, Y and 8. Now if you listened earlier we set our camera to 8 and that's why we scale the tunnel up to 8 is so that we get a perfect loop so if you go to top view you'll see the camera starts precisely where the tunnel starts if you see that little orange dot. Now I'm just going to scale this along the x-axis so scale S, X and we're going to do that up until where the skulls sort of and you're getting a bit clip in here so we're gonna hit S Z and just scale that up a bit and you'll see the skulls sort of travel through the tunnel and I, it doesn't look great right now but when we start shading the tunnel too it's gonna look cooler first of all I'm gonna apply the scale so hit control a apply scale on your cylinder now add a modifier and we're gonna add a wireframe modifier we're going to use this to add a bit more depth into the tunnel later but first of all we're going to duplicate this wireframe so shift D so we've got two tunnels and we'll remove the wireframe on the second one and we're just going to scale it out a bit further on the x-axis and we'll scale it out a bit further up just so it sort of goes around it we want the skulls to completely disappear through it so I think I'm going to scale both of these in so click on both of them and we'll scale both of them now next step we're going to animate our camera so it goes along the tunnel to the end and then back again to create that looping effect so click on your camera come to the first frame apply a keyframe on the y axis come to frame 1 2 1 8 on the y axis apply a keyframe and we'll hit A T set interpolation to linear now hit play and you'll see the camera comes to the end and then back again and that's going to create that looping effect but next step we just need to extend our tunnel so click on your cylinder and your cylinder click on your skulls and your skulls so just select everything apart from the camera and we're going to hit M new collection and we'll call this tunnel so now everything's been moved to this new collection and we're going to instance this rather than duplicate it now this just saves us, now the reason why we instance rather than duplicate is it just saves a bit of stress on your computer and also it's great because any changes you make to the original object here it will affect all of the instances so we're gonna hit shift A add a collection instance and we'll just add that tunnel we just made we'll hit G Y 16 and we're gonna hit shift D Y 16 we'll just keep hitting shift R which will repeat the process until you get about 10 of them now hit zero, let's take our overlays off and you get this. So now we're going to go back to our shading. So hit Z and then 8. Come into render mode and you'll see this. Now we want to bring out the scene a bit more. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my render properties. I'm going to add ambient occlusion. I'm going to add some bloom. I'll just bring the intensity down though. The EV bloom is quite strong. Make sure your render engine is set to EV. We're going to add screen space reflections, and this is going to bring out some awesome detail into the scene. And we're not going to bother with motion blur. Now, if you come into your tunnel collection, this is where all the objects are now. On this cylinder, this cylinder, I'm just going to name that wireframe. So that's the one with the wireframes. 
and then this one is going to be called reflections. Now on your wireframe cylinder, come to your modifier, you just want to apply that modifier, so just hit Control A, it's going to apply the modifier. Now we're going to go into edit mode in the object, so on your cylinder wire, come into edit mode, and that's going to, applying that modifier is going to allow you to select individual faces on the wireframe. Make sure in your face select, select a face, and we're going to come to select, and we're going to do select random, and we're just going to drop the percentage down to about here, and we're going to come to our material settings. You can also play with the seed generator if you want, just gives you a random selection of the amount that you have set. So yeah, just find somewhere you like, go to our material settings, we'll add a new material. This first one's going to be our base material, so we'll just make that metallic. We won't worry too much about this, and then we'll add another material and we're going to make this an emission shader so change the surface to emission and select the color that you want to go with the color scheme we'll say a nice dark red we'll put the emission up to eight and we're going to hit assign and that's going to assign this emission shader to all of the faces that we have selected on the wireframe so hit assign and then come out of edit mode take your overlays off and you'll see you have these sort of colors now. If you want it a darker red, just bring that black down. Alternatively, if you want a different color, you can play around with that. But yeah, I'm just gonna go over red for now. And if you want, you can add another material and you can add a different color emission shader. Let's say yellow, orange, and then you can do the same thing. So face select, select, select random, and assign that orange one if you want two different colors on it. Next step, I'm gonna shade my cylinder reflection. So I'm gonna add a new material and I want this to be fully reflective so I'm going to add I'm going to pump the metallic all the way up and then I'm going to drop the roughness all the way down and you're going to get this sort of look here and you can tame these reflections out a bit just by dropping the base color if you find the reflections a bit too strong and if you find your skulls a bit too big you can select each skull and you can scale them down a bit but you just need to make sure you have this thing here set to individual origins and then with all your skulls selected, you can hit S and just, you can scale them to how you see fit. I thought, I think they were a bit too big, so I'm just going to scale them down a bit. Right, I'm going to go back to my scene settings. I'm going to go to color management and I'm going to set it to very high contrast. I just think it looks better in these kind of renders. You can drop the gamma down to 0.9. Great, and that's pretty much it then. Now, all you got to do, just save the project. You want to come to your scene settings here and on output, you just want to save it somewhere you can find it. Change your file format to FFmpeg video. Encoding, set that to MP4. And then video codec, leave that as H.264. Output quality, you want that as perceptually lossless. And then all you've got to do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you feel like you learned something, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you consistently follow my content and you feel like I'm providing value to you, consider becoming a Patreon as that's the best way to support me directly. I'll also be leaving a link to the project file in the description if you want to have a play around with that, or you can just find it at nedmotion.co.uk.